Back in 2018, Tesla filed a patent application for a unibody casting machine, which seemingly would go a step further than their current cast front and rear underbody design, and instead be able to cast a complete or substantially complete vehicle frame. While that original Tesla patent application never turned into a granted patent, and it was marked as abandoned, a new report from Reuters reveals that Tesla has not given up hope on a die-cast vehicle frame, and that Tesla's next-gen compact car could very well involve a one-piece underbody casting. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. What Tesla was able to do with the underbody castings for the Model Y is of course still revolutionary in the automotive space. And it looks like Tesla wants to go a step further and make a complete one piece underbody design that incorporates not only the front and rear of the vehicle, but some of the connecting parts in the middle as well. The author of this article claims that this new cast design is a core part of Tesla's unboxed manufacturing process. Tesla's new unboxed process is a modular approach to vehicle manufacturing, and essentially as I understand it, various sub-assemblies of the vehicle are manufactured separately and then connected together at the end of the process. And this new manufacturing process, according to Tesla, should be quite a bit more efficient when it comes to factory space leading to a 44% increase in operator density and a 30% improvement in what Tesla refers to as space-time efficiency. And this should help Tesla achieve their drastically low manufacturing cost targets for this new compact vehicle. Here's an example of how this unboxed process could play out with a new compact Tesla. Once again, the complete underbody could be cast in one piece, and this underbody could have the motors, suspension, axles, etc., attached to this underbody assembly. Then you could have two side vehicle assemblies that would have interior and mechanical components installed separately. You could have the door and rear hatch assemblies. And then you could have a structural battery pack with a seats, floor, and various interior components installed. And then at the end of the process, each one of these individual components could be brought together to form the completed vehicle. The author of this article did make it clear that Tesla has not made the final decision as to whether or not they were going to completely cast the underbody of this new vehicle. So it looks like they're still developing this and working out the details. The author of this article points out just how expensive it is to develop the molds to make these castings. And uh, for instance, a tweak in the design could cost $100,000 each time, or redoing the mold could cost, according to the author here, $1.5 million. And apparently the entire design process can cost somewhere around $4 million. While traditionally it's very expensive to develop a casting mold, and especially you would expect a mold that's going to be as big as one that would be required for a complete vehicle underbody, you would expect that to cost a lot. But in true Tesla fashion, they are apparently developing this underbody cast design with a much more cost efficient process. The author of this article wrote, quote, to overcome the obstacles, Tesla turned to firms that make test molds out of industrial sand with 3D printers. Using a digital design file, Printers known as binder jets deposit a liquid binding agent into a thin layer of sand and gradually build a mold layer by layer that can die cast molten alloys. According to one source, the cost of the design validation process with sand casting, even with multiple versions, is minimal, just 3% of doing the same with a metal prototype. That means that Tesla can tweak prototypes as many times as needed, reprinting a new one in a matter of hours. The author goes on to make it clear that not only is this new process apparently a lot more cost effective, but it also appears to shorten the time of development for this new casting. The author wrote, quote, the design validation cycle using sand casting only takes two to three months, two of the sources said, compared with anywhere from six months to a year for metal mold prototypes. Even though this next gen Tesla vehicle is expected to be compact, it's still going to require a very large die casting machine to make this. Now, with the Model Y underbody castings, Tesla currently uses a 6,000 ton press. 
And for the Cybertruck underbody castings, Tesla uses 9,000 ton presses. However, a complete underbody casting would require the biggest Giga press yet, and in this article it's estimated that that press could end up being a 16,000 ton press or more. Now when it comes to the development of this new next-gen compact Tesla, apparently Tesla has decided to move the development of that vehicle to Gigafactory, Texas. On this topic, the author of this article that was published on notatesla.app.com wrote, quote, this aligns with recent insights from Walter Isaacson's biography of Elon Musk, illustrating a strategic shift in Tesla's operations. Initially slated for Mexico, the production hub for the next generation EV platform will now reside in Giga Texas. This will allow Musk to keep a closer eye on the development, design engineers, and manufacturing hub to facilitate immediate feedback and streamline processes. The book also said that Giga Mexico would still play a significant role, but now it seems it would be where the new technology would be housed after being perfected in Texas. In addition to that move, Gigafactory Mexico may not actually see the start of construction till late 2026 or into early 2027. The delay of Gigafactory Mexico is of course unfortunate, but if Tesla can in the meantime develop the new compact Tesla at Gigafactory Texas, then it really won't be a big deal. And by the time that they build Gigafactory Mexico, they can have the process already worked out and working efficiently. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.